make yourself valuable and people will pay for you. That is what we do with gold, silver. How about gasoline, water? Our society has made these things what? Valuable. So we do what? We pay a lot of money for them because we made them valuable. Well, make yourself just like gold. In other words, develop a gift in your life that has become so valuable to everybody else that they will pay you to perform it. Les Brown and I were chatting one day and uh, we became good friends over the past 10 years or so and uh, one day we were chatting some of you were doing a conference together and I was telling him about this invitation I got to go and speak to this company and I said uh, I said uh, how much should I request as a fee from this company and he said how much do you think are worth to that company I said I don't know I was just starting in, in that particular area of the business of public speaking and I said I don't know maybe four or five thousand bucks he said that's all you think you're worth I said they only want me to speak for an hour and a half he said that's what you think you're worth I said how much do you charge them for an hour and a half he said twenty five thousand dollars starting price he said if you charge them less than that I'm ashamed of you he said you better than me and he was serious about it so I filled out a contract and put $25,000 the check was in the mail the next day make yourself a person of value don't seek success Let me give you another example of how it works. If someone had to think about something that reminded them of you, what would it be? That's a serious question. Because if they never think about you, that means you have never made yourself valuable. become a jack of too many trades so you master nothing you think of Tiger Woods what do you think about Michael Jordan what do you think about Barbara Streisand what do you think about interesting that's a good answer Barbara Streisand you think about two things don't you acting and singing she developed two gifts what do they think about when they call your name your problem is they don't think about you at all become so good in an area that they can't ignore you the world is filled with general people you come to this conference to cease being general you're not in the general group anymore. You, you got to go home and decide for the next 20 years, I'm going to carve out a niche for myself that they're going to have to find me and can't ignore me. You ever heard Jesus talk? Oh, he talked with such confidence. I am the bread of life. If any man hunger, he made himself valuable to them. I am the water of life. If any man thirst, in other words, if anyone think of water, they think about me trying to get across his value to them so the crowds pressed him by the thousands to try and get to the water vision is what gives you this unique discovery about what you're supposed to master so in my book on leadership on my vision I hope you get a copy of it read it it talks about the fact that sight is the ability to see things as they are but vision is the capacity to see things as they could be now this next statement is important. Write it in bold letters, please. All true visions will be tested for authenticity. 
all true visions will be tested for authenticity. If your vision is truly from God, life will test it to prove that it's authentic. So get used to the idea of challenges if your vision is real. It doesn't come to stop your vision, it came to test it, to prove it that it's true, if it's real. If a vision is terminated by trials, it was probably not authentic. Sometimes your vision may take you to prison, but you got to go there with it and come out with it, like Nelson Mandela. Suppose Nelson really wasn't serious about destroying apartheid when he stood in that courtroom as a 24-year-old lawyer. Just suppose. He said, you know, this ain't worth it, man. I'm going to go back to my job, forget these people. You know, they can stand the oppression. I got me a good job. I'm out of the neighborhood where I was, out of the slums. I'm going to be a lawyer in South Africa, and I'm going to make me some money. Forget my brethren. He could have said that. But his vision was so authentic to him. He said, I'd go to jail and lose my adult life for the sake of this vision. How much are you willing to pay to keep what you believe in? Vision is powerful. Write this down, please. True vision is discovered. When you discover something, you're supposed to die for. Visionary leaders ask the question, what kind of history do you dream of making? We're in this session to talk about how to write that vision down. But these are some preliminary thoughts you need to have in your mind. What is it that you'd like to do to write your part of history. In other words, do something that they cannot erase from history. And you don't need to do great massive things. We keep thinking I do great massive For example, the woman who poured the oil on the body of Jesus. You know what he said about her? I mean, that was such a simple act, eh? She took some perfume, which is believed to have been some embalming type fluid as well because he said this was for my burial the scent of that stuff was so strong they knew what it was very precious spices from northern Africa and Asia and that was imported stuff very expensive she had a little vial of it probably cost about $15,000 in, uh, in our modern day currency and she took that and rubbed it on the body of Jesus and it was just a simple act and that's it she vanished out of history guess what we're not even sure what her name is it doesn't tell us what her name was now, some people assume it's Mary and all that Mary might name. You know, it, it doesn't quite say who it was. But yet Jesus said, what she has done will be spoken of all through history. See, some of you think you got to build a big building like Dr. Miles Monroe or build a school. No, there's some little things you were born to do that they can't get rid of. For example, there's no such thing as the gospel according to Andrew. Is that right? Amazing. He has no gospel. But yet, it was Andrew who brought Jesus to Peter. Or Peter to Jesus, rather. In other words, he was the connector. There has to be an Andrew that history can't forget. You may never stand here where I am and be under the camera lights. That may not be your vision for being born. But whatever you're supposed to do is not supposed to be erased. That's why I am convinced you were not created just to make a living and pay bills. You were created to give life and make a difference with your gift somewhere. That's why you came to this place. Here are some things that vision will do when you discover it. One, vision will choose your future. Two, vision will choose your friends. Three, vision will choose your library. Four, vision will choose your use of time. Five, vision will choose your use of energy. Six, vision will choose your movies that you waste your money on. <laughs> Seven, vision will choose your priorities in life. Eight, vision will even choose your hobbies. Even the games you play should be related to your vision. 
I used to hate golf. <laughs> Why? I didn't understand golf. You know how many hate things you don't understand? And one day I was watching uh, Bill Crosby on a show and he was talking about golf and he had me laughing, man. I was laughing. And Bill Crosby kept on saying, golf is a stupid game. He had these grown men out on this place hitting a little ball with a piece of stick and then putting it in the hole, taking it back out and then hit it again, put it in the hole. He said, this is so stupid. And so I got my philosophy about golf from Bill Cosby. So one day, a friend of mine who's here today said, he said, Doc, you want to go play some golf? I said, golf, that's a stupid game. I said, only grown men walk around with a piece of stick and hit this ball in the hole, take it out. He said, that's a stupid game. He said, look, you want to go at least and go on the course and let me, you know, at least show you how to do it. I said, okay, no problem. Let's go. I said, you got, you know, got a day off and let's go take it. So we rented this course and uh, we rented stuff because, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't like golf. So they rented me the stuff and uh, they rented even the shoes I had on. I had to rent the shoes. We went on the course and he says, he says, hit, you know, and he showed me how to hit the thing. And it's beautiful. I love that. You know, the environment is wonderful. And I hit this thing. And when I hit that first ball, an anointing came upon me. <laughs> See, some of you all don't know what we're talking about unless you've been in. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Come on, you golfers. There's an anointing on the golf course that no one understands. I mean, I don't know whether I was, you know, just born to be good at it. <laughs> but when I hooked, took that thing and I swung, I mean, the ball went, ah! Woo! And I went, I said, let me try that again. Hit it again. Bang! After the fourth time, I started feeling this thing. And, I, and then the guy says, look, it's time to go. I said, don't go yet, man. We got a good, just a couple more holes, man. We stayed out there for four hours. Next morning, I said, let's go. The next, the next day, we went on the course. And he had someone with him. He was a movie star. I said, oh, he said, this is the guy who stars in New York Cops on TV. I said, I was just this guy. I said, wow, I saw you on TV, that's right. He said, I saw you on TV too, man. <laughs> we began to chat. We walked into the, to the golf shop on the course. I saw another movie star, another athlete, and all the folks who I knew in boxes. I said, my goodness, this is where everybody gathers. It's where the money is. Oh, I began to act like I was a golfer, you know. <laughs> yeah, this is life out here. I said, man, how did, how, how, did you, how, did you, how did you do yesterday? Didn't know what I was talking about at all. You know? <laughs> My third time on the golf course was incredible. They took me out to Pebble Beach. Now, you golfers know about Pebble Beach, right? Tiger Woods, Arnold Schwarzenegger, everybody on there. And I, I don't know anything about golf, nor Pebble Beach. I don't know what Pebble Beach is. So here we are going to the Pebble Beach and I'm walking out there and anybody who's anybody is there on the course. And I'm like, all oh, the money's out here. Billions of dollars on the course. The course. And they say, this, this is where deals are made. I said, take me on the course every day. <laughs> and the people I met out there are people who had my money. You can get it after I'm gone. See, some of you pastors ain't know what you're missing. You better go learn golf. The anointing is on the course, man. Your hobbies should be related to your vision. If you're going to play dominoes, play with rich people. <laughs> Let your hobbies bring you into environments that expand your vision and your networks. Coming here, some of you came because there's a little vacation built into this. But look at what you are getting and meeting while you're here. And there are people in this group who got a lot of money. I mean, some of them I tell you, but you want to know who you're sitting next to. They got millions of dollars. But they ain't, they, they ain't here, for the, they, they here for some other reasons. And part of it may be for you just to get to know one another. What do you choose to play with? Even let your play be with a purpose. Everybody say play with purpose. It's important. You know, having your own aircraft is incredible too. It's a whole new world. Because you never go through the normal airports anymore. 
So all the private airports are only filled with people who own their planes. You know what that means? Use your imagination. So now I meet all these people who you never see. It's amazing. Vision chooses your hobbies. Next, big one. <laughs> vision chooses your diet. Number 12, vision chooses how you invest your money. 13, vision chooses how you write your to-do list. In other words, your to-do list should be created by your vision. What am I going to do today or this week? It will be things that will take me toward my vision. 14, vision chooses your attitude in life. If you know where you're going, it tells you how to think. 15, vision chooses your life. It tells you what kind of life you're supposed to end up living. And so it chooses what kind of lifestyle you begin living right now. Vision dictates everything. People who have no vision in their lives, they throw off restraint. They throw off self-control. They have no idea. 16, vision chooses your life's plan. It tells you what to plan for your life. How to plan your living. And next, vision dictates your values. Very important, we learned about this all week. When you know what you were born to do, it dictates how you should behave and what kind of standards you should live by. Right away, it changes everything. Still writing? I'm sorry. Then it's too late. Buy the tape. Glory is the goal of life. There is no greater purpose in life than to expose your personal glory. It is a fact of creation that every living thing possesses its own glory and exists for the purpose of manifesting the glory. If the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without a purpose, then the greatest shame in life is not revealing your true glory. The cemeteries of earth are filled with the glory of many who failed to access their true selves and left the earth without ever showing their real worth. The question is, why do so many individuals live an entire life never experiencing the glory of their lives, while others live to taste the glory of a full and fulfilled life? You and every one of the people on this planet are walking containers of glory, and it is the Creator's desire that each one release that full glory and fill the earth with the glory of their manufacturer. Yet the question is, how do you accomplish this? I wrote this book to provide you with keys and principles to assist you. It is my hope and desire that you will truly tap into your hidden glory and fill your generation with the fragrance of your life.